So I've just got off the train here at Thaden Boys and I'm going to walk across the fields to Epping Station. This is a great um, little walk. It's not far, but I did it three years ago with my, uh, with my youngest son and we did it uh, it's September, I think, and it's just really delightful. For a short walk, it just delivers a lot. And you're basically walking across the fields here and going underneath the uh, M25. It's really nice. So this field here is a, a departure point for a number of really good walks. I walked across here, I think it was last October, when I walked along the Roman Road at Hobbs Cross, and that walk started in this field here. This is a great oak tree, isn't it? Fantastic tree, a real marker on these walks. A real introduction to the countryside away from the tube line. And of course today is Armistice Day, the 11th of November. So it was a very poignant day, time to reflect. interesting and in late summer it was astonishing because it was all kind of parched and burnt off. So at this stage autumn going into winter it's softer and damper, well actually downright wet because it's been raining. But it still has a kind of almost sort of scorched earth apocalyptic feel to it to me. Look, it is a really strange field this one. All scrubby with rough weeds broken ground. And here's the land of the teasel out here, isn't it? The little stream runs across the field here. It's a bit of this lovely old wooden bridge. I wonder if there's a troll beneath it. Let's have a look. I also slightly like I'm encroaching when I come into places like this because I feel like this is the domain of the rabbits and the birds and the odd fox and that, you know, my human presence is unwelcome. It's incredibly wet through here. really strong link between uh, walking and memory. I don't know if any of you read the wonderful Bruce Chatwin book, uh, Songlines, he talks about this idea that uh, Indigenous Australians had of singing uh, the landscape into being, but also encoding uh, folk memory in this series of lines in the landscape. It's a way of passing on knowledge. If you learn the walk, then you learn certain information and various other kind of cultures which have that tradition and also just we have it obviously just through doing it yourself <laughs> you understand that my memory is so strong that I can't remember where this path goes <laughs> and another lovely little bridge I think was this the third of the day already I'd have to look up the name of this little stream and uh, put it on the screen here I'm guessing it's a tributary of the roading, but I could be wrong. Now this is one of those things which often completely throws me. I think I've got to carry on because I want to go underneath the M25, so I think I'm going to go up here. Well, the OS map isn't a terrific amount of help at the moment. It shows the footpath going straight until you hit the uh, M25, but this is where memory comes in actually, and I seem to remember sitting 
over there under those trees and having a, a picnic with my son. But again, you know, could be wrong. I can't see the path here actually. Actually, I decided to turn back and take the other path of that fork. And when I came through the stile there, I thought, yes, this rings more of a bell. So I remember that sort of tree there. Probably might be a different time of year, but <laughs> look at this dense bank of these kind of, I don't know what plum is, teas all mixed in with something else. This is going to be interesting looking through here. There's the M25 there, you can see the cars. There's a tunnel there that takes you through. I think that's what I'm going to do now. Beautiful autumn colours on that tree there. Well, I've changed my mind again. Carried on along the side of that field. I really wanted to find the place where we sat and had a, a picnic. It was really lovely, you know when you get that last blaze of summer sun as it goes into autumn. We sat and had uh, some sandwiches and stuff we bought in Tesco. And I think it's just up here. Yeah, I think this is it here. We sat pretty much under this tree. And munched on our sandwiches. Looking out at this view here. Like a thunderous, angry beast carving its way, rampaging across the landscape. You can tell I'm not really a big fan of uh, busy roads. It's a really beautiful view, sun coming out. Over Staden Boys, over the edge of Epping Forest. But it's still pretty cloudy over the rump of the forest there, isn't it? And of course, the M25 will forever belong to Ian Sinclair, the great Ian Sinclair. His wonderful book, London Orbital, where he walks all around the M25. So he must have come through here at some point. And over the next few weeks I will be uploading uh, two videos with Ian. Uh, one is the walk along Watling Street that we did with Ian and Andrew Cotting and Anne Caron Delion. And then um, the next video is a walk we did from the top of Shooter's Hill down through to Woolwich. And both of them were great walks. Um, I think you'll really enjoy them. The, the tube track runs along that tree line there at the bottom of the field and the, the sentry line just made its way along and there's something really magical about seeing a tube train cutting across fields. So it's sort of incongruous, it's like something that's not supposed to happen, the tube being such a, a symbol of uh, urban London, of metropolitan life and here you have these beautiful fields. So here it is, the tunnel beneath the M25 linking together two fields. Of course. You can't walk through a tunnel like this without kind of testing the acoustics, can you? Whoa, whoa. Bum, bum. I don't think that break. Now it's down along this lovely little footpath here, littered with autumn leaves. walk with my son three years ago I think we went up those steps there and it takes you across a lovely couple of fields and then quite quickly down to Epping station um, I've got a couple of hours so I think I might take a different route see if I can extend the walk a little bit oh no I really hate walking across golf courses partly because I usually get lost on them oh well let's give it a go so predictably I've lost my bearings on the golf course. It's very difficult to keep to the footpath. 
and there's no markings, but um, this is delightful anyway. And golfers here don't seem in the least bit bothered that you're walking around the golf course. I just asked the guy for directions, he was like, yeah, why don't you just walk up a fairway with the golfers? <laughs> I've come off the golf course into this field and I'm you know, kind of improvising now. <laughs> Just stick to the edge of this field and then find another footpath. That's never a good sign, is it? How to turn a simple and moderately familiar walk into a minor adventure. I now have no idea where the footpath is. Uh, this feels a bit, a little bit like a footpath, doesn't it? And uh, I know there's a footpath <laughs> oh, somewhere around here. It's just don't know if this is it. So, a rare kind of example of my instincts actually guiding me along the footpath. Maybe I am finally, after all these years, learning something. So this is a little place called Fiddler's Hamlet. What a great name. Um, so I think I can walk along that road there, as long as it's not one of the death roads. That road is really dangerous. Now there's people with like 4x4s four driving really fast, so skips across the ditch into the field. There is a footpath up here anyway, so... And it looks like there is an unofficial footpath here. Anyway, I think. This is going to be interesting because I think this footpath here connects with a little section of the Essex Way that I walked along. I mean, I say a little section, I mean almost like a hundred yards <laughs> of it when I walked, uh, did the Hobbs Crosswalk. So it's always nice when you connect footpaths together. You get an overall impression of the area. Looming dark clouds over the ploughed field. So this is the Essex Way. And uh, I walked this little bit here. Uh, when I did the walk through Hobbs Cross uh, last October. But I think now I'm going to actually go in a little loop, back away from Epping and then come back round. Uh, on the other side I haven't walked, there's a little path here, a little corner, which I've never explored. So I used the last hour of daylight to do that. <laughs> That was really funny and another great example of how my sense of direction is so totally wayward. Uh, I, I went that path there and it went, it's only when I got to the top of that field and I could see the M11 I thought oh, I've gone wrong. I was basically heading back out <laughs> towards Hobbs Cross and that way back out to the countryside. When actually I should be going up here and this will take me up and I can come back round to Epping. <laughs> here we are, the Essex Way, that's what I wanted. And poignantly marked with a poppy. So today is Armistice Day, tomorrow is Remembered Sunday. And this is the path that's going to take me into the sunset. There's a beautiful display of autumn colours, though, isn't it? Really spectacular. And there's a young couple picking slow berries from the hedgerow to make gin. So you don't want to end up just carrying on the Essex Way. Let's make sure I can find my way back to uh, Epping. So that was actually called Gurnan Bushes. Sign of specific scientific interest. It's a great view back towards the, uh, the terrain I've covered today. Amazing walk it's been, really beautiful. So this is the old disused section of the uh, central line that ran from Epping to Ongar, and uh, now is operated by a group of uh, railway enthusiasts here, the Epping to Ongar railway, where they run steam trains. Brilliant experience, highly recommend it. I did it, uh, I think it was last year, with my son, uh, my youngest son. And, uh, some footage from that in there actually because we actually went along this section of the line. So this is I think the final 
of open space before I hit the edge of Epping. A lovely walk, perfect for this time of year. The evenings are getting shorter now. We're looking at sunset very shortly. It's 3.40, sunset will be 4.15. I love this time of year for walking. Thanks for coming with me. It's been a really beautiful afternoon. Looking forward to the next walk, wherever it will be. Thank you.